So for the basics for your airlock, you need an inner door and an outer door. Uh, this is the outer door, inner door, and a vent. It's hooked up to a tank that has some empty space in it. Can't be 100% full. Um, you can have as many doors as you want. You can put it on a group uh, for either the inner door or the outer door. So the first thing we need to do before we mess with the event controller is we need to get our airlock into an initial condition. So we're going to close this door and turn it off. And we're going to select our vent and turn it to depressurize. Uh, now it's in depressurized mode. Now we can set up our event controller. When we go in here to the event controller, we want to change our event from cargo filled. I think that's the default to door opened. Select both of our doors and add them to the selected block list. And then in our actions here, uh, the first slot would be for if the door is opened. Second slot would be for if the door is closed. That's what we want is doors closed. Uh, so our first one here, we're going to toggle on and off the inner door and hit control two, go to toolbar two, toggle on and off the outer door, control three, toolbar three. We want to depressurize on off the vent and that's it. That's all we need to set up on our um, event controller. So now it is ready to cycle the airlock. It'll close that door, set the vent to pressurize and then unlock or turn on this um, door here. And we can manually open it, or we can have it automatically open by setting up the actions in our air vent. So here in setup actions in the vent, there's two options. The first one is for when it's pressurized. The second one is for when it's depressurized. Uh, so when it's pressurized, we want to open the inner door. And when it's depressurized, we want to open the outer door. And that is it for that. Uh, now to cycle the airlock, we need to close that outer door. So I've got that set up on this button panel. Close it. It'll cycle through and open this inner door. Now we'll watch the operation. Uh, to cycle through your airlock, you just need to close whatever door is open. So what we'll see is when we close this door, this one will turn red, it'll turn off. This one will turn green and turn on. Uh, this will change from pressurizing to depressurizing, and once it gets fully empty or one little bar there, this door will open. Uh, so we'll go ahead and cycle that. Let's try to pay attention to all the lights. It happens pretty quick. This is a small airlock. This button panel we can set up to close the inner door. Uh, that way if we ever get trapped on this side with this door closed and now locked, um, we just have to hit this button, close the door, and we can get back inside. Um, the other thing that we can do is we can set up a sensor. Put a sensor here and we're going to show on the HUD and we're going to show the sensor field range. Uh, this one is pretty good. It's right halfway in between uh, this block, which is exactly where we want it. We're going to leave that. I'm not going to mess with any of the other ranges. Uh, for our actions, when we're in range, uh, because this sensor is on the outside of the base, uh, when we are in range, we want to close the inner door. When we get out of range, we want to close the outer door. So now, when we cross this um, sensor threshold, it'll get into pressurized mode on this half. When we get inside, when we swap over to this side, it'll go into depressurized mode, and we can get outside. Um, so this is a great way to automate it. Um, this is obviously a fairly small airlock. I got to smash my face against the door for it to trigger, um, but it works. Uh, the next thing I wanted to cover was um, plugging this oxygen tank into our system. So if we were to just plumb this up directly, that generator is going to overfill that tank and that's not going to be good for us. Uh, so what we could do is set up a um, event controller here for gas tank filled. Well, let's pick a number that's higher than what it is now. And then for our actions, oh, we want to add our tank to the block. It won't work otherwise. For our actions, I already got it set up, but uh, when the tank is happy, it's at over 55%, it turns the generator off. And then when it needs more air, it turns the generator back on. Uh, that way you make sure your tank always has air, but it also doesn't get overfilled. We plumbed this in. You'll see that fill up. And that generator just turned red, it's off, and the tank is happy at 55%. So if we do two connectors face-to-face -face like that, it does take up more space. Um, 
here in the actions, instead of turning on and off our generator, we take our connector and on the first slot here, we would want to unlock it because it got to 55%. We want it to disconnect. And when it's under, we want it to connect. So then the oxygen can flow freely. Uh, let's change the number to 60%. It's not going to do anything right now because we don't have an initial uh, state set up. Um, but if we watch this here, I'll go into this and lock the connector. It'll lock for a period of time and then it'll unlock itself. There we go. And this event controller triggered uh, because our tank is now at 60%. So that is a way to keep your tanks full uh, on a valve system. It does take up more space. So, you know, design accordingly there. Um, but our uh, H2 generator gets to remain on. So that's all I wanted to cover valve between the tank and the generator and then the uh, event controller airlock and the sensor setup. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions and have a good day.